Is getting your master's in electrical engineering actually worth it? Or are you better off just going to work right after school? In this video, I'll discuss why I chose to get my master's and some of the benefits that I've received through it. I'll also talk about instances where you don't have to have your master's. And by the end, you'll hear some personal stories and some advice that I wish I knew when I was making this decision and you'll know whether or not it's right for you. Why do people consider getting their master's in electrical in the first place? To many people, having a master's equals more salary. While that is true, and in my personal experience, after I received my master's, I believe that I was paid around 10% more than my peers when I was just starting out. So if you take an average starting salary of about seventy-five dollars to $80,000, so you do the math, you'll get five to $7,000 more starting out. Then the big question is, is it worth the extra two years of experience? We'll get into this now. So typically, the more you specialize, the more valuable you become and the more doors that open. But also that means that you start to narrow down your field of view and you can only start working really in certain certain industries. Certain industries require some more specialization. In electrical, as you may or may not have found out, it is such a broad field. Pretty much every engineering is so broad that when you get your master's, you start to really zero in on a specialty. So my specialty was in power systems. And I actually ended up doing my master's thesis on a project that involved renewables and a battery storage system. So I was really diving into power systems and renewable energy. Therefore, that was clearly where I was going to go. And of course, when I started to apply to positions, in the power industry, I stood out more than anybody else because I was already geared toward this. I knew exactly where I wanted to be. So in that case, it did help me out. But notice, well, at that point, I had to basically go into power. If I went somewhere else, then my master's wouldn't have been as valuable. Had I gone into, say, telecom, it wouldn't have been as valuable because I did my master's in power systems. And finally, why you might be considering it is because you might want to just go into research or academia. If you want to go into research, you have to basically have your master's at the very least. Typically, you would need to go for your PhD. So this is a stepping stone towards this. So that's a good reason to consider getting your master's. So when is a master's really worth it? As mentioned, it really depends on the industry that you're diving into and also what type of roles that you're going to be getting involved in. So something like advanced robotics or semiconductors or even power systems, these so-called specialized career paths where your goal is to become the subject matter expert, you will typically have an advantage. So you sort of fast tracked on this route. And now, that even opens up doors into future leadership roles because you're taking the initiative and investing in yourself. You become more valuable than others. So really that shows the potential employer that you know what it is that you are wanting to do with your career. Now you're choosing to be specialized and you're going after a specific industry or even a job type. That's when it really pays off, when you know exactly what you want to do. If you're not entirely sure and want to be perhaps more flexible with the industries that you want to work in, in, then you might not have to have your master's. But if you know, for instance, where you want to be, if you want to get paid a little more, that's when it really pays off. And I do feel that in my career, it has helped me out tremendously. I was able to get hired on right away into the company that I wanted to work with. I started working in the power industry from the very beginning and all of my experience doing research with all the courses that I had taken, even my master's thesis really helped me acquire that role. A huge benefit to me when I actually got my master's was that I did the thesis route, which was incredible. One of the hardest things I've ever done. But basically, I did have to have a thesis topic. And in this case here was this renewable storage system with the battery and the solar panels. And I had to do some studies around that. And I wrote out this thesis, it was 100 plus pages, and I presented it to, to my peers and PhD candidates and all the professors that were there. And it was nerve wracking. I was so so nervous. After I finished it, though, I remember I was so happy. And I ended up going to the top of the parking garage in my school and just screamed. I was it was such a that I've never felt before or not felt up until that point in my life, I should say. And it was such an incredible feeling. It made me very, very, very confident. So that was a huge benefit to me, just that that confidence boost and knowing that, hey, I can do something like this. And just all that effort had kind of paid off. It shows that you're accomplished and that you've gone the extra mile. So anytime you can differentiate yourself from others, obviously it helps you out. And in this case, you're having your master's will help you out. And certainly, as we touched on, if you want to go into academia or research, Research at all, you basically have to have your master's. So that that question is already answered. If that's what you want to do, then that's where you need to go. So over a long enough period of time, yes, you will pay back the two or three years that you took to get your degree, it'll just take a, a longer time. However, as mentioned, some of the hidden benefits are that you'll most likely be fast track or leadership positions because you're investing in yourself. Anytime you can invest
invest in yourself in school or your career that pays off dividends that is the best investment it's not the s p 500 it's not bitcoin invest in yourself and this is a case here where you're showing every potential employer that you talk to that you are choosing to invest in yourself that's very powerful but let's be honest there are some downsides and as mentioned, one of them is by focusing and narrowing in on the field that you want to be involved in, you basically remove the others that are potentially out there. That is the opportunity cost. That's that's a big thing in life, isn't it? You choose to do one thing and forego another thing. You probably already made these decisions already. Uh, you chose to do electrical. You could have gone to mechanical. You could have gone to computer science. You could have gone to IT, whatever, but you chose to do electrical. So therefore you made a decision. Decision, that word, the root of that word means to cut away to cut away any other options so of course by you choosing to go for your masters you now begin to remove these other options you could certainly switch industries so the power example that we talked about you could go into power do your masters in that let's say you don't like it after a while you could go into the semiconductor space or vlsi or telecom or whatever else you want however there are going to be some questions asked why, why didn't you just stick with power you were already in power you know so those things you have to bear in mind so if you want to be a bit more flexible then i'd say probably probably not a good idea to get your master's. So let's just do some quick math. Let's say that it takes you two years to get your master's. In the US, that'll run you roughly 20 to $30,000 at a public school, more so if you're at a private school. Okay, so $30,000. So I guess the question is, how quickly could I make the $30,000 back? Well, got my TA-83 holler if anybody else knows what this one is. Okay, so $30,000, uh, let's say that initially you get paid about 10% more. So let's say you make, I don't know, six, $7,000 more than uh, your coworkers that do not have their masters. So then really 30,000 divided by 7,000, let's say. So in about four and a half years, you will be able to recoup that. But mind you, there is another cost because you did not work for two years. So in those two years, you could have made potentially, let's say $150,000. So 150,000 divided by 7,000, that will take you about 21.42 years to recoup. The thing, the truth is, it's not, those numbers don't really work like that because you having your master's will most likely be fast tracked, whether or not you want to be a subject matter expert or in a leadership role. So it'll work out faster. So really typically probably in a, in a decade or 10 or so years, you will make the money back if that's all you're after to get paid more. And on the flip side, again, you have to ask yourself in those two years that you spent investing in yourself, you learned a lot more than anybody else did in their bachelor's about this specific topic. That was the exact same experience for me. So I took about two and a half years to graduate because my professor ended up leaving the school and I could have followed him, but I chose not to pick a different professor. So it did kind of delay me. But in those two and a half years, you know, I really kind of learned what it meant to be a, not only a student, but to be more professional. It was a lot of kind of personal development. And of course, all the classes that I had taken, it was about a 30 credit program. So about 10, 10 or so classes that I had taken, they were all about the power industry. You know, there was relay protection, there were power systems, electromagnetics, one, to all these incredible classes that really solidified my knowledge on the field and increased my, my confidence and just overall perspective on everything that I was doing. So that's kind of priceless. You can't put a dollar number on that. But there is opportunity cost, of course, to taking those two years and not be working. Something else to consider is that in certain fields, experience trumps education. For instance, for roles in field services or construction or a startup environment or even in quality, those fields might not value the masters as much as being more of a specialist. They'll value more your experience. So there it's almost better to start working early and not have to focus on your masters. The employers care more about what you've done rather than what you've studied. So it really sort of does depend. And I guess the question you're asking yourself is, okay, how do I know which industries, which fields? The best thing there is to talk to other people that are in those industries. So when you go to a career fair, ask ask questions, ask your peers, ask your professors, ask your advisors, do some Googling, do some chat GPT and do some research to figure out what it is that you might want to be doing and then figure out if the masters would help you. What are the alternatives to getting the masters? You can still level up without having a huge two year commitment. Well, one thing you can do is depending on your industry, get your FE and get your PE. If 
if that's a help. In the power industry, for instance, that is a help. Not every industry it is, so do your own research when you have to make this decision. You can get your PMP, which is a project management certification, or you can get your Six Sigma if you're getting into manufacturing and quality. All these things will help you stand out. These certifications are cheaper, they're a lot faster, and they will be a nice thing to put on your resume and something you can talk about. Instead of a master's, you can also consider getting your MBA if you wanna go down the managerial route. And somebody who's young, who doesn't have work experience, the MBA, at least in my view, isn't nearly as valuable as somebody who has the work experience and has an MBA. So that's something to kind of to consider. But here's maybe the best of both worlds and an option that I've been recommending some of the guys on my team. It's that many companies offer continued education and they will actually pay for you to go to school while working for them. So now in this case, you're working for a company full time and that's your main priority, right? So you got to do your 40 hours a week or, or whatever the deal is with that company. And then they'll pay for you to go to school, typically only taking one or two classes a semester. In this case, it means that it'll take you longer to get your master's. If you're only taking two classes a semester, then that'll take you about five or six semesters. So really it'll be a big challenge, but it could be done. The company will pay for you and you're still working and gaining work experience. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, but it's not easy. It's a big commitment to do that. However, if you have the aptitude and the discipline and just the desire to go for it, that might be the absolute best option. Anytime a company is willing to pay for you, that's a no brainer. They want you to succeed. They want you to keep improving because anytime that you invest in yourself, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, that benefits everybody. That benefits yourself, your team, and of course, the people that you work with, the products that you're working, uh, that you're creating, uh, the companies that you might be consulting for or anything else on that side of the business. That's why companies choose to pay for you. That might be the best option for all of these things that we've discussed here today. So for my case, you can see it was totally worth it and I don't regret it for an instant, but it worked out because I knew where I wanted to be. I had really good mentors and my parents and my professors that sort of guided me down this path and I thank them all for that. And really it's helped me in my career in many, many ways, not only with just a deeper understanding of all these systems, but also just in accelerating my path towards becoming an engineering manager. So in summary, it's totally worth it if you know exactly what field you want to specialize in, if you want to boost in your earnings, if you want to go down the academia and the PhD route, and if you want to stand out from the crowd and really boost not only your resume, but just any time that you talk to anybody and you let them know you have your master's, it puts you in a different echelon of, and people can understand that. It feels, it's a good feeling. It'll give you more confidence. Now, it's not worth it if you're not really too sure what you want to go into and want to have some more flexibility about potentially hopping between industries. I don't fully recommend that because I do believe you'll lose some earning potential there, but it gives you more flexibility, that's for sure. Or if you're working in a field that doesn't necessarily value having a master's and they prioritize more the sort of hands-on experience, and we've talked about that, you have to do your research to kind of figure out what those industries are. And finally, it's not worth it if you can't really justify the cost to benefit thing. We did a, some quick crude math here to try to figure that out, but there is some cost and benefit to the opportunity cost of you choosing to do it versus not doing it. So those are some things that you should consider. If you found this helpful, give me a like and a subscribe. I go into many more deep dives into what it takes to be an electrical engineer.